Welcome, Vault Dwellers. My name is Nacho Bidness. We're back at my test lab at Spectacle Island, which is unfortunately looking a little bare because I had a mod conflict and lost a bunch of gameplay. But that is the risk you run sometimes playing with too many mods. Gonna show off some electrical tips and tricks today, and the first thing I wanted to mention is that street lights are something that can carry power from place to place, but they're not actually power emitters in the radiant power system. So that table lamp, for example, was not lit up, whereas if that had been a power pylon, instead of a street light, it would have been lit. And that is important for our first demonstration here. What I want to do is I want to have three modes of lighting. I'd like to have a mode that is all lights off and I would like to have a mode that is one set of lights on and then I want to have a mode that is a second set of lights on and I'd like to do that by a remote control and I want to do it because I think that it just kind of looks neat and so I can have like a security mode or a I'm building at night mode and then kind of another mode that's mood lighting to make things look good. Now you probably saw that that generator there is currently turned off and that's because generators in and of themselves can be power emitters and we only want to have this emitting power when we want to. I've gone ahead and set up the delayed on switches to one quarter second delays and I've got these power counters set to two each and they're on different digits and that will allow us to roll through all of our modes and I've daisy chained these delayed on switches together in front of these power counters so that I can achieve my remote control. It might sound confusing, but it's actually pretty simple to set up, and I'll show you what it looks like kind of in action here. So we turn the generator on, and we've got light number one on, and light number two is now on, and you can see the power counters have changed. Hit the switch again, the power counters change again, both of them are off and the fun thing about this is that I can do this from either location it doesn't matter for a practical demonstration of what this can look like in a settlement Merkwater construction I had a very small set of generators and I was running a lot of water purifiers so I was able to, from a switch, at any guard station in the settlement, turn off all of the purifiers and turn on all the turrets. So we can easily control things that are connected by wires, but if you watched my light switch tutorial, you probably saw that we can assign lights to a particular circuit. Now this one has decided to be finicky and not work the way that I wanted, but let's just roll the power here. You can see we've got the lights on and we'll hit it again. Lights turn off and hit it again. Now there's power in that conduit right there running over here but you can see the lights are off. I can even go in and now set up some other lights and maybe do like some mood lighting type stuff so maybe set that up and, uh, and maybe one of those and put a spotlight over there and just kind of set up lighting that is more designed to make the settlement look good rather than actually illuminate anything. 
And assuming I've done everything just right, so we've got our well lit mode. We've got everything turned off. And now we've got our mood lighting. So it's a handy trick to maybe kind of customize the lights in your settlement. I'm going to show a practical application in my home plate build, which is uh, coming up. And I hope that that may illustrate the point even a little bit better. The second demonstration is something that came from watching a video by Dark Dally. He was attempting to control parts of his settlement by adding or removing power from his circuit. Um, and if it was pretty much anybody but him, I would think that they're nuts, but Dark Dally is, uh, is some kind of evil genius. If you're not watching his channel, you should be, and I'll put a link in the description below to what prompted this, because he was trying to basically add and remove generator power to control things and unfortunately that doesn't work in the system in Fallout. You can see we've got a total of eight power here and there's eight light boxes and if we remove that only five of the light boxes are lit put it back and now all eight are lit. And when we throw this switch it should just be five light boxes that are lit because there's power on this side and no power on this side, supposedly, but unfortunately, when everything's on the same grid, the total power all contributes no matter how you wire it. I thought that he was trying that he was basically trying to set up a diode, and that was not what he was attempting to accomplish. Now if we do add a diode, uh, it still has the same result. This is an XOR logic gate which only transmits power when exactly one input is live. And you can see here that we've got the input is low and the output is low. And so it's not transmitting any power and yet still all of those light boxes are lit. And just to kind of prove the point, We'll hit that switch. It is transmitting power now. Still, all the light boxes are lit. We can now add a second input here so that it's not transmitting power. You can see on the screen that the output is dark and, and it's also shown as zero on the display on the right side of the screen there. And still, all eight light boxes are lit. That is an unfortunate limitation in the Fallout build mode, but it does mean that you can save some, yourself some time and essentially put all of your generators on one big grid and control all of your elements with switches and logic gates. Uh, it is a more practical application for a diode that I want to show here. We can do a lot of things with that XOR logic gate that amount to diodes. And what I'm going to show here is a little light box animation. What I would like to do is I would like to have number one light up and then turn off. Then number two light up and turn off. And then both of them light up and blink together. And I'm going to start by wiring this the wrong way. I've got that switch turned off so that we're not doing this with power in the circuit because I don't want to mess up the order of my power counters here. What I have done is I have preset this interval switch which automatically turns on and off. I've set that to six seconds on and one second off. I've got another interval switch here that I have set to one second on and one second off. And I've got these three power counters that are all set to two, but they're all each on a different digit. 
So I'm going to wire that one to number one. And I'm going to wire this one to number two. And I'm going to wire this one to my interval switch and the interval switch to both one and two. And at first glance, that's going to work. But I'll show you what it actually does. I'll turn the switch on and one's on, two's blinking. I didn't want that. And then the next step in the animation, two's on, one's blinking, and I didn't want that. In the third step, they're both on and blinking. I did want that, but the other two parts of the animation aren't working, and here's why. When number one is powered, it's also back feeding power to that interval switch, making two start to blink, and vice versa. So what I'd like to do is use a diode to make the power only flow one way and make my animation work the way that I want it to. So I just want to wait until, there we go, make sure that they're steady state before I hit the switch. And we're gonna fix this animation now using a diode. So I'm gonna take these wires off the interval switch and I am going to put this XOR gate between the interval switch and the numbers there. And then I'm going to wire both numbers to the off side or the, the output side of the XOR gate. So the only time power flows is when that interval switch is live and it's blinking now. It's just an animation. There's no power in it. It's a slightly glitchy thing about interval switches. So let's see how it works now. Just double check that. Yep, everything's a different digit. And turn it on. They're both blinking, which is one step that I wanted. And now number one turns on and two's not on. Number two is now on. And then they're both gonna blink. And this kind of simple animation, I think adds a lot to the way a settlement looks. Obviously I've only got, you know, one and two here, but you could put, you could have it be your name, shining out lights on your settlement walls or a big sign that says keep out or I don't know live nudes whatever you can imagine and it's just not hard to set up something that is simple to build and yet looks like it was really complicated I'm gonna show off a application of this uh, again in that home plate build that I've got coming up I hope you found this information useful, and if you did, take a look at some of my other videos, maybe look at my light switch tutorial, and if you like those, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. And if you didn't like, please tell me why down in the comments so I can try and do better next time. Until next time, my name is Nacho Bidness, and it's a great big wasteland out there. Let's go have fun in it.